And with that, the house has now been upgraded. So I have changed the path here to just basically lead to the road right here instead of the other messed up stuff we had in the last episode. The path goes up, I haven't changed anything else with it. Same spruce slabs and everything leading up to the house, which has been given a huge makeover. So I went ahead and replaced all the spruce planks here with this calcite. And I think this looks much better together with the deep slate. And at the top, I kind of tried some texturing with the diorite. I think it looks okay on both sides. And I also went ahead and replaced the normal flowers we had here with these flower pots with azalea leaves in them. I think it adds a lot of greenery and a lot of color to the place. And on the inside, I will explain why the storage is missing in a moment. We have the door that then leads to the backyard where I'm growing my potatoes because I need food and baked potatoes. They're good. They're yummy. So I'm growing my own potatoes. And after just a single harvest, I have a stack and 10. That's a pretty good yield. That's just one issue now. The house looks great on the outside, but on the inside, it is quite empty and quite bland. It doesn't really look that great. I mean, if we go to the second floor, th th that's nothing. It's empty, it's boring, but there's a solution. Because British Widow and Hocus is actually considering opening a little bit of a business where they decorate people's homes. And it just turned out that they contacted me and asked me if I wanted to be their first customer and also test subject. So I had a little bit of a meeting with British Widow and Hocus about their operation in my house. By the way, for context, I was AFK when they arrived at my house. Is this how you greet new people? What's up? Where the... Where? Binary! Hi. Okay, so first impressions. Horrible. You try and murder me while I'm AFK. Um, so, so far... Well... So <laughs> oh, far... One second, this, one second. This company is not doing great on reviews. <laughs> well, that, that should only take us down by, I don't know, like a quarter of a star. Yeah, yeah, some, something like that. I mean, depends on how can well you, the work is. I can, I can, I can. Can you, you know. just appreciate my entrance? I just flew uh -huh. in through your doors. Oh, you flew in. <laughs> okay, you know what? You I know what? In. You're good. That was such a good entrance. <laughs> that if if you keep doing that to your customers, I'll I'll remove the negative star. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. Okay, should we murder him? Is this is this a good chance? We, we to... could just kill him now. We could. Oh, oh, hi. I heard that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, this is my house. As you can see, um, I'm a master at decoration. Um, as you can see, this this purple block, it, it really stands out with the. Um... Oh, yeah, I'm not good at that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that good at decorating, am I? <laughs> hang, on, hang on, there we go. And yeah. stay out. Yeah, the, OK, yeah. So your decorational <laughs> skills involves a purple pillar. Yep. Yes. Yep. Do pretty much anything. Just make it look better than what it is now. If pretty possible. much anything, huh? Pretty much yeah. any. Okay. I, I said see make it. I said. I said make it better than what it is now. I think it's mainly on the inside, and especially if you come up with me here on on the on the in the. There's, there's attic nothing or... going on on the second floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would love to have a staircase up here, like where I can just come up here and then. Okay. Have a hmm. cooler hmm. bed, maybe some bed decoration stuff. I don't know, <laughs> something, something. We, we can do cooler beds. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can definitely um, do something for you, binary. I was thinking like uh, maybe, maybe we can come up with a price based on how much work we do. Yeah, that yeah. works. So yeah. start starting starting price diamond block each. Yeah, each. that works. All right, all right, that works. Yeah, well, me and my colleague here, we're gonna have to. Uh, skedaddle and yes. come up with a with a plan that works we'll do this for you and then we'll uh we'll let you know yes perfect and we'll let you know in an explosive manner that... i'll put something outside your front of your house that will have some tnt that will explode and pop out a little note for you to tell you when it's going to happen Th i don't actually know if i'm going to do that i'm just coming up with random things <laughs> on the spot <laughs> all right yep that works thank you <laughs> so there we go hocus and british widow will be decorating my house both floors I'm actually quite excited for this. 
So that is why the storage wall is empty and I have moved it all the way out here. Yeah, I'm starting to make a little bit of a chest monster, but I have a plan. Basically, my plan is to be making a storage barn. I'm not quite sure where I want to place it, either here, maybe back there, maybe over there. Yeah, I'm not sure yet, but I'm not going to worry about it right now, though we will probably be doing it next episode. Speaking of marketplace, we have actually profited. So if you look in here, all our deep slate has been sold, but not only that, all of our glowing sack has also been sold. Plus, we have sold three shulker boxes, resulting in a grand total of 31 diamonds right there. Amradon basically came in, bought all the deep slate, bought all the ink sack. I don't know who bought, bought the shulkers, but yeah, 31 diamonds. That's pretty good. But that also means that one of my tasks will be to restock the marketplace. But first, I have something else that we need to do. Because in today's episode, I want to do something that I haven't actually done before, and it will require a lot of resources. Basically, I want to go ahead and make an infinite gold and XP farm. So it's a gold farm you can basically stand in and get endless amount of XP as well as endless amount of gold. The XP is going to be extremely handy when all of our stuff is equipped with mending. So we can basically just sit there and everything repairs itself. As well as infinite gold because what I want to do in a later episode is to set up a bartering station so we can barter and get a bunch of stuff from the piglins which I can then later sell in the marketplace. So that is the plan for today's episode, which is why I am currently emptying all my shulker boxes because I need a lot of items to be able to pull this off. Just as an example, I need uh, 5,708 magma blocks. Yep. And that's just about three shulker boxes worth. But not only that, I also need 2,456 glass, which is about, yeah, two shulker boxes or something. So I need a lot of resources, plus I need to restock the marketplace as well. So without any further ado, let's get to resource gathering. First thing I'm gonna do is mine a bunch of deep slate just to get it out of the way and restock the shop. Mining deep slate is a little bit of a pain though, so maybe I should invest in getting a beacon fairly soon. Would you look at that? I found some diamonds. Let's see how many we get. Nine diamonds. You know what? I'll take it. And after a little bit of mining, I now have 10 stacks of couple deep slate and nine diamonds. Deep slate shop has been restocked. Now I want to go ahead and make a chest somewhere down here. Actually got to put it right by the portal. And in this chest, I will be putting everything that I will be needing for this gold farm. There are a bunch of smaller things that we need, like one piston, one lever. So I'm going to go ahead and craft up all of those small ingredients and then I'll be right back. A quick progress update. This is what I have gathered so far. And I'm only halfway through the list. The list I'm following says 60 snow, but I don't know if it means snow blocks or what exactly it is referring to. It turns out I'm back here again, and I'm back here for this. I also want to give Amradon a little bit of an extra tip for basically allowing me to use his villagers. Also just so happens that Amradon is selling iron, it would seem. Factory Direct Ironworks, two diamonds equals one stack of ingots. Two diamonds, one stack of ingots. So this amount of iron should be able to cut it for me. Back home we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply the silk touch to my diamond shovel. And now I can get all the snow I need. So far, so good. Now I only need four more items, of which I will be needing my diamonds yet again, because I need to head on over to Endervar's base, or shop I should say, and buy some string. Now it doesn't have a crafting table on the spot, so I'm gonna improvise. Yeah, that should be enough scaffolding. In fact, I only needed 107. Next, I need a ton of trap doors. Now the only stuff that I need are magma blocks, sand, and three more name tags. Now before collecting the last items that I need to be able to build this farm, I actually want to go ahead and go through the nether and break through the bedrock roof and find a spot for the farm itself. But before I can do that, I need a little bit of TNT to be able to break through the bedrock and I have two gunpowder. But I know who has a creeper farm nearby. Now he's not selling the gunpowder, but I'm sure if I maybe leave a few diamonds and a very nice looking sign, 
that he won't mind. Like, look at this thing. This is beautiful. So this is Hocus's place right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just need a few pieces of TNT. So I only really need 18 gunpowder. I might need more, but I'm sure he won't mind. I decided to take 25. So I stole 25 gunpowder. Sorry. Binary. Two diamonds. Boom. Deal done. <laughs> With that, I now should be able to make TNT. Hopefully this is enough. Next, we finally need to go to the nether. But we're quickly going to leave again because I'm really headed to the stronghold. Mainly because I need just a few ender pearls, Which I should be able to get from the farm bridge's widow made. Yep, this should do. Now it is time to get to work. So I'm thinking of putting the gateway or the, the hole just behind my portal. Because I eventually want my portal to be a 3x3 anyway. So... If I just stick back here just a little bit, maybe go back like five blocks or so. Now, if you look at the targeted block coordinate, I am looking for one that says 227. So I'm not quite there yet. The tutorial I'm following is saying 127, but it looks like 126 is the top. That, I don't know. I don't know what is going on, but it looks to be as if that is the top layer. Now, this could go very wrong. So keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully I won't need rescuing or anything, but now we need to make some ladders all the way up to that block right there, equip an ender pearl, and throw it right there? Okay, yeah. Um, kinda made it. We're on the roof of the nether. Perfect. Alright, so this is going to be interesting. I have never done this before, so the chance of me doing this completely wrong is high. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyway. So to do this, from my understanding, piston, obsidian, solid block, lever, uh, trapdoor, TNT, and then what you gotta do, put some light on the subject here, is basically press the lever, go under the pressure plate, and then hold down or press rapidly right click right on this corner right here. So that should do it. I don't know. We're gonna find out. Uh, yeah. And it failed. Yeah, I, ca I kinda messed that up. We shall try again. A trick that you could do is apparently you could go in here and rebind this to something else that isn't used. And so right click is now on my keyboard because now I can do it a lot faster. So stand here. Do that. Right here. And that should. Oh, wrong button now. <laughs> and that should have worked when the piston is facing upwards. Beautiful. That's just one slight issue. I'm out of TNT. And I have a few more bedrock to break. And basically stuck. I am basically stuck at the moment. Um, so the only really way I could actually do this is quite sadly gonna be making that Enderman kill me. And that's quite sad because I haven't died yet on the server. Enderman, I need you to come and kill me. This is, this is, yeah, yeah, ow. But I am now back home, which now I have another problem. All my stuff is in a shulker box on the roof of the nether and I don't have any more sand nor do I have any more gunpowder. Well, huh. I mean, I guess I have some stuff. I can take sand from down here. Now I just need 10 more gunpowder. Sorry, Hogus. It's 45. Now I can make four more TNT, which is exactly what I need. Now the final issue I have is that I don't have any ender pearls. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna place the TNT in here, go to the stronghold on foot, through the end on foot, Take out the pearls and hopefully make it back alive. I am now in the end. Gotta look down. Don't look up. Gotta be very, very careful. This farm better be worth it. And I'm hoping... Yes, that's ladders. Okay. And there's even end the pearls right on the... That scared me. That scared me. Now I just gotta make it over to the bedrock portal and I should be at my bed and I should be able to get my stuff. If you're enjoying the episode so far, please leave a like for my suffering. 
Um, and if, if you do, consider subscribing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Back home. All right, sweet, I can run again. Let's go through the portal, get up top, and finish this job. So, up to the ladder, throw a pearl right there, and boom, I'm at the top, and here's all my items. Perfect. I'm so dumb. I didn't grab the TNT from my house. And now I need to go through and do the ender pearls again. Uh. Boom. Okay. Back for real this time. Now I can actually go ahead and finish this. Now I should be able to break this block and then this block and then we're done. Then do that. That and hold down. Boom. Sweet. Just one more to go. <clears throat> this could be an issue. Right. I need to break a way bigger hole than this, which means I need to go through the death process again. Oh boy. When you're breaking bedrock, make sure the target bedrock you're looking at is 127, not 126, because otherwise I wouldn't have to deal with this. All right, this time I will not fail. Basically, I have moved the hole over, so when we press F3 right now, you, you can see in targeted block it says 127. So all I will need to do is break one block, and then we are through. So I'm basically scrapping this hole, or which, whichever one it was. Now I just gotta go through. And not forget about that hole. There we go. I'm just gonna forget about this failure right here. You know what? This... This right here? Those are the failure blocks, right? They're cursed or something. All right. Break this. Place a piston. And I really hope that I get the block right this time. Equip the pistons. Go like this. And we're through. We're through. Uh, we're through. We made it. Why do I have a feeling that that itself, that breaking this bedrock, for me anyway, took way longer than it's going to take to actually build the, the farm itself? <laughs> but our challenges are not over yet. Now I need to go in, well, kind of any direction, honestly. I need to find not a soul sand valley. I need to basically find another waste biome. Left, right, eeny, miny, mo. Okay, and pretty quickly, actually, we are in a pretty big nether waste biome. So I'm gonna say from this torch, it starts all the way down there. So, so I'm gonna start the farm right here. X marks the spot. Now I can equip my wings and head back home. Now with my inventory organized and my stroke boxes in place, I'm gonna go ahead and collect the magma blocks that we need. Which actually wasn't as painful as I thought it was. I actually stumbled into a bastion, though it didn't have that much loot that was useful to me, so I just kind of moved on. I did go down though to the big trash area in the middle of this huge place. I made a questionable staircase, but uh, I made it at the end. Made a tunnel, I went in, took all the gold blocks, and there was actually a piece of nether scrap, which was actually, well, very welcome, because I need that. Other than that, it was just pretty much me flying around, gathering magma blocks, and... Yeah, mining magma blocks. It's actually really satisfying to mine. But as much as it's satisfying, it's also it can also be quite dangerous. Um, so yeah, it wasn't without risk. And yeah, nothing else really to it. Fly around, find patches of magma blocks, and it actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Now I decided to go ahead and get the sand that I need as well. I ended up filling three shulker boxes, and yeah, that was actually quite satisfying as well. I managed to do it without having to repair my shovel, so that was really nice. But after all that grinding, we finally have everything that we need to be making this gold farm. We have all the magma blocks as well as all the glass. I did want to dye the glass, but I quickly figured out that it would require about nine stacks of whatever die I wanted and no. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chuck this into another shulker box and I'm gonna carry all these with me over to the construction site in the nether and we will get started on the farm itself. But first you may have noticed that Endavar is busy in the background over here by his tower slash factory. 
he, he's up to something big over here. Something else that is big for us is that we have actually sold some shulker boxes. If we go over here into the barrel, we have made 20 diamonds in total from these shulker boxes, which I'm now going to steal one of my own. And speaking of shulker boxes, I actually have a little bit of a business idea, but that will be for another episode. What I'm going to do now is place the shulker and I'm pretty much just going to move everything from this chest into this shulker box right here. I can remove this chest and with that, take the shulker boxes and head through the portal. I will want to make this path a lot prettier as well in the future. But for now, this will work. Heading up the ladder here, following our trail of torches all the way over to the construction site. And there we go. All the stuff that we need has now been transferred here, which means it is time for me to begin the construction of the farm, which is going to result in a time lapse. Let's finally get this thing done. And after about three hours of work to build this thing, it is now completely constructed. And I haven't actually tested it yet, so that is what we will be doing now. Now this farm design is from, I believe, El Mango. I will leave a link for the tutorial that I used to build this <laughs> down below in the comments if you want to make it as well. It was kind of painful. Gas was spawning. I think it would be beneficial to start with the glass layer, but at the same time also not because you would need to measure everything and yeah. So yeah, that is something to consider, but I believe that I have everything made as it should be. Now, just a quick explanation. The magma blocks right here is basically so the pigments spawn. Nothing else will be able to spawn on these. And because of the way the layers are put, uh, gas shouldn't be able to spawn. And that is also why we have glass at the top there to stop them from spawning on the top layer. And these guys out here, as you can see, they have a name tag. Uh, this guy is called, is called Grumpy, <laughs> which are basically going to be the messengers, kind of. So what will happen is I will be standing on that pressure plate right there. I will shoot an arrow to anger one of the pigmen and all of them in the area is going to get angry. Now those guys, because they are name tagged, they are not going to be able to despawn and because they're only on one block, they can't move. They're going to stay there and when new pigmen spawn, they are going to be angry as well and they're gonna tell the new one that spawns, hey, we're angry at this guy, go kill him. So that is pretty much how the farm works. And now the question is, how do I, oh. Well, that was fairly easy. Oh yeah, we also do have, oh, that's a scaffolding. We also do have, of course, some storage here. We have a lot of storage. I don't know how quick this farm is going to fill up everything. Um, So that's gonna be interesting. But anyways, I think it is about time that we test it out. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know, basically I shoot a pigman, they get angry, they come running in, and they basically run down into the into one of these four holes right here and into these 24 minecarts, which will basically make them suffocate from the entity cramming. But what I should be able to do is now just shoot an arrow, if I can aim right. And they should all now be on their way, as we can see. They should all fall in these holes. And it is very loud. And the XP is just pretty much just pouring in. <laughs> Look at this, I can get everything that needs repairing repaired just by standing here AFK. I don't need to do anything. Wow, this thing is working well. And as you can see, it just keeps, keep, they just keep spawning. I'm getting endless and endless amount of XP. I'm, I'm already at level 36. I mean, how long have I been standing here for? 30 seconds? So yeah, it is quite efficient. Um, now, if I go down here, let's just take a look at the storage. Because obviously we're gonna get gold ingots, we're gonna get run flesh and gold nuggets, but also all these swords. 
So I may want to set up some sort of sorting system eventually. Oh, we also get the piglin head. That's cool. So yeah, maybe a sorting system eventually is going to be a good idea <laughs> with all the XP that was just waiting for me by the ladder. Now the minecarts are quite loud. I don't know if that is supposed to happen. These other ones are not loud. These specific ones are. So maybe I, need to, maybe I did something wrong with that. I don't know. But yeah, that was a quick demonstration. Oh, some of them are still angry at me. Uh, here they go. <laughs> So yeah, that was just a quick little demonstration of what this farm can do and I think even though that this took me a lot of hours to create and gather resources for, I think it has definitely been worth it. So guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, I am planning to be making our storage room back home because I still have a storage issue. I'm, I'm starting to get a chest monster build up, which I'm not really happy about. So I want to be able to sort my stuff. So I think a storage barn is in order, but who knows? We might actually come back here and create some sort of sorting system, but we will see. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm on level 50 already, so I'm just going to sit here for a little while, just AFK. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, enable those notifications so you don't miss when I upload. And I hope to see you next time. There's the level 50 ding. <laughs> Have a wonderful day and goodbye.